Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for episode two of Legacy Leadership with Oki van Sale. And uh, also joining us is my co-host, Ulysse Geldenes. Welcome to the two of you again. Thank you, Ari. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good you to like be it. here. Yeah, likewise. Um, Oki, we we heard such great things from you in your in your first episode with us. Um, just remind the uh, the folks again um, about yourself and the, the organizations you represent, just as a quick refresher, and then um, yeah, I'll I'll climb in with a few catch up questions for those that are joining us for round two. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, so I'm the founder and co-founder with Chase Growth and Flush Technologies, and based in Stalies. And previously, we've discussed the importance of clarity and transparency in a company and as a leader and my experiences I had as a rugby player and business leader, the importance of to be clear about what is expected, the importance of the clarity of the vision, the purpose of a company, the values of a company, the roles and the responsibilities. The example I gave was like the marathon runner and the 5K fun run. When I start engaging with them, about the importance of training and we're going to sacrifice and we're going to do this and that. If we're going to leave it, leave it up to experience and assumptions, it's not going to go well because the 5K fun run person, the way what, and what he thinks about sacrifice and when it comes to training and putting time and effort in versus the season marathon run is two totally different things. Mm. And we as leaders and legacy leaders who wants to lead with example and make a difference, it's so important that we are clear with our communication, clear with the roles and the responsibilities, clear the expectancy, the values, the purpose. Mm. And then I spoke about, we spoke about transparency, how it's so important to be transparent because it keeps you honest and focused on the goal, what we are pursuing as a company. As I said with rugby, when, once you're done with rugby, everybody knows exactly you, your salary, your income, your girlfriend, your weight, everything about you, how many tackles you missed, and you've been critiqued. But this keeps you focused, driven, honest, hardworking towards the goal, the purpose, what we would like to achieve. Yeah. So transparency in business is so important, and it keeps everybody yeah, honest and on their toes and focused towards the goal in the business. But if you're not clear in the beginning, the clarity and the transparency lacks, and that's a huge stumbling block. And Two wisdom nuggets I just want to touch on again is mm. as business leaders, we want to scale our business. And two very important points there is systems and leadership. Mm. And if you're not clear and transparent, we lack on both of those things. Sure. And we're going to come to a breaking point in our business because the foundation is not set and then it struggles. And this is not theory. This is what I saw in real life in my rugby um, career and in business. Sure. Just previous 12 years. Maybe on a lighter note, Oki, uh, maybe it's lighter, maybe it's heavier, <laughs> is you, you played rugby for uh, at school level, provincial level. Um, what did accountability look like after a, a, a bad game? Uh, what does it look like for a rugby player when, when, when that happens? So there's a lot of things that happens. And first thing is the commentators and your parents. Is the commentator said this and that about you. The other thing is the Monday or the Sunday even, you will have a video session. So exactly, this is what need to change. This is what need to change. This is what you did. There you missed the tackle. There you need to do this. Why did you do that there? So the accountability level when it comes to rugby is quite heavily. And mm. if you don't perform, it's not a funny, it's not something that you don't know what's coming. You don't get a contract. Why, do people, why do people run away from accountability, do you think? Because a lot of people, I think, in life doesn't like to work that hard. And that's why you get not a lot of people in life who live out their full potential because they are afraid of breaking out those comfort zones. Mm. It's much easier in life running around and hiding in your comfort zone in life, at school, playing at rugby, being a business leader or employee. I'm in my comfort zone. I know what's coming. I just want to do this. I want to focus on that and not breaking that boundary. So I think that's why people like dodging accountability. Mm. Would you say that um, for those young aspiring leaders out there, 
saying, you know, what do I need to do to be a leader? You know, they're asking the question, like, do I need to drive the fancy car? Do I need to have the fancy building? Um, do I need to have the fancy suit? Do I need to watch 55 John Maxwell videos in a row and be able to recite it off by hand? Would you say that accountability is probably one of the core uh, characteristic traits that you need to be a good leader? Would, I mean, and, I, and I just want to word it differently to say, the ability to receive criticism and respond positively towards that. Yes. Harry, leaders lead. Leaders lead, and that's so important. They don't lead. People are better off because of leaders. Mm. And that's a key and a very important factor, I think, in life is people are better off because of you as a leader. And the accountability, being a great leader, there comes a lot of responsibility. We've touched on that in our previous session. And for us as leaders, there's a lot of sacrifice going on behind the scene. There's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of critique. There's a lot of haters, naysayers that goes on. But that's part of leadership. Hmm. Leaders lead good times and bad times. Leaders lead with their eyes on the vision, on the purpose. And they lead not, they manage the facts and not the emotions. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important thing as well when you're a leader. Hmm. Ulysse, um, maybe a question to you. Uh, what, is, what does accountability look like to you? Before I ask Oki to unpack it for us. <laughs> um, I think accountability is identified. For me, it's, it, it's so important. If you ever, I've experienced in my own life, if you want to achieve something, it's such a good measurement to have in place because we won't always feel like doing the right thing or we won't always feel like getting up and if we talk about if we talk about training or 5k if we, if we look at the sports environment you won't feel like doing that but if i say listen okay like keep me accountable of this please or if you for my trainer mm. having that in place would help me to reach my goals so much better yeah um so for me it's actually a person in my life it's 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 always been having somebody because like you just spoke about emotions, you know, it, it sometimes you don't feel like doing things. Mm. But having account accountability measures in place as a person, that's going to be whether you go and you watch a video after a sports game, that person says, okay, you missed that one. Let's focus here. Let's do that. Mm. So for me, it would be having that person that, that actually says, so, but once again, we look at clarity and communication because if beforehand we said, I'm training for, um, the, the August, which I did last year with Harry, um, and felt like I was going to die. But I mean, if I did not train for that, and if we didn't say, listen, we need to cycle together, and I, if I didn't have a plan that said, this week I need to cycle this amount of kilometers, and the next week this amount, then I probably would have, like, probably would have died. And so I know it's very dramatic. I probably would not have died. But I mean, I might have pulled something. Or, or But just the importance of that, because now I could have stood there at the end of that and say, you know what, I did this. Yeah. Uh, I achieved this. I accomplished this. But because mm. I had those account be accountability uh, measurements and partners in place. so oh, yeah. That's good. Yes. Well, okay. Uh, you've certainly come along for many years into the space of leadership and, and helping organizations grow. Um, unpack accountability for us a little bit and, and your understanding of it. So it ties up now as we end off with, now you were clear in the business. As a business leader, you were exactly clear. Everybody knows exactly what to do, when to do, how to. And then you're transparent about it. So there's no blame shifting, and but transparent both ways. Because you put yourself on the spot now as well. And that comes in to accountability. So now we can sit one another down and discuss what's the better thing for the business? How are we going to achieve that purpose, that mm. the values, the vision, the targets in our business? So now you can sit down. And the key is to be diligent with that. And the diligence, then my next point is it's hard work. It's not easy. And that's why there's not so many good leaders. It's not easy unfortunately, to be diligent because now you have to address if there's a lack in values. Mm. You can see someone is slipping or maybe wandering off. You're diligent in addressing the issue. That's the mm. third point. A lot of people, unfortunately, don't like addressing the issue, conflict. Mm. But 
that's not what it's about. If you're honest and you continually instill that, vice versa, yeah. uh, any team member can go to the team leader and discuss, hey, this is our values about, this is the target, this is the goal, mm. this is what you said. Vice versa. Now it's the culture of the company. Mm. So now it's not a big thing. Now it's not a conflict thing anymore. Now we can say, hey, Julius, remember one of our values is attention to detail. It was twice now you missed this quote, you, you did it wrong. Mm. Please, let's focus on it. And that makes a good leader. Yeah. That builds great companies. That brings great culture. But because now the leader leads with example yeah. from the front. And all the employees, this was amazing. It's important. That's why I encourage everybody to have quarterly reviews. So if your structure is in place, your career on all the expectancies, what's in place, mm -hmm. the quarterly reviews so or every second month, the review. Now you sit down. But when we did for Flash Technologies, we did our quarterly review last month. And it was brilliant because the lady reports to me and Tom, the co-founder of Flus, when we're done, they review us. But That's now, awesome. so we're clear and honest on, because they know this is coming. This is my role response. This is what I expect of me. We discussed their continual education, the values, and all the roles and responsibilities. But now at the end, they, they review us. And it was so amazing for me to see her telling Tom what he needs to improve on. So I laughed, but that's that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because it's not a personal thing. We're open, we're humble, we're teachable. Mm. Yeah. For the better of all of us, the better the company does, the better we can help, the more people we can help, the more business we can help, the bigger our types of offerings can be, mm -hmm. the bigger the influence, the bigger the company grow, the more employees there is, the bigger the influence we as leaders can have and the impact we can have on the people that's working with us. Mm. And that was amazing. And that ties just up where accountability is. But if that's lacking, it's difficult to mm. keep each other accountable if that basics is not in place, Harry. Mm. So I'm hearing you say that clarity plus transparency, transparency equals accountability. Um, as we wrap up this, this session, um, what is it that you want to leave the listeners with um, from this process? Leaders lead. Mm. Manage the facts and not the emotions. Mm. We've been entrusted with that position, with that division, and as faithful servants, we need to improve, multiply what has been entrusted of us. And sometimes we have to make hard decisions. And it's not a personal thing. It's we being faithful leaders and leaving a legacy, a leadership legacy, mm. to over hand over the baton one day when it's done. Sure. That's so good. I want to uh, thank you, Oki, for joining us and for coming to share with the listeners um, some of this hard yards, you know, from a uh, big rugby player to selling calendars to working your way up the process um, and understanding that leaders lead. Thank you. Um, and Thank I think the, the next generation of leaders will, will, will get a lot from this. And I really appreciate your time. Just as a last one, where can people get hold of you and uh, engage with you on these topics? Chasegrove.co.za or growth at chasegrove.co.za. Thank you very much for your time, Thank Ulysse. Thank you, Harry, Ulysse. Appreciate Thank you. you. That was Thank good. Keep up the good work. Thank you. As always, listeners, uh, please listen out for our next podcast. Um, Legacy Leadership is um, coming to, the, to an end uh, probably around about the end of August. And we look forward to our next season um, of campaigns, which will be Blood Money, where we look at the uh, impact of corruption on society. But thank you for joining us for this, uh, for this session, and we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs>